Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial about micro servos or just servos in general. Basically what we're going to do is go over how servos work and kind of what their design is. So in this case we have an MG90S micro servo which you can see is pretty small. It's about one centimeter by two centimeters. That's about the overall dimensions of it. And what a servo is is actually basically just a gear motor with a sensor inside of it. The way they work or are controlled is they have three wires that come into them. The wires are the negative wire or ground, the positive wire, which can only go up to six volts, and that's basically universal for all servos, and then the orange wire, which sends a PWM signal. Now a PWM signal can be generated by most microcontrollers. It's a signal of, which is a set of pulses, which give the servo information as an angle of where it should be positioned. So based on the PWM signal, the servo can drive to a certain position. Most servos only have a range of 180 degrees. A few can go 360 and a few can go continuous, but those are generally more expensive and often not quite as applicable. Most servos, like this very small one, are used in like RC aircraft or small hobby robotics. So it's not very common to need 360 degrees. This one right here is designed for a small RC plane so that you can control it and move its flaps up and down. That's what it's designed to do, very precisely control the angle of something. So as I said, a servo is a motor that's basically just a gear motor with a sensor inside. In here you can kind of see through what is inside of the servo, but what we're actually going to do is I'm going to show you one that we've taken apart uh, just for this tutorial. lined up there underneath the camera so you can see it a little bit better. So right here you can see where the servo is and we've taken off the, the top right here. This is the top. This is the top of the servo. This is the point that comes out and you can actually attach a horn to. You can see it's got several gears here and then the motor is right here and underneath here is the chip. So let's just go ahead and pull that out. You can kind of see how it comes apart take all of these components out. This may take a little bit longer than anticipated. There we go. These two gears moved over to the side. So you can see right here is the motor with a very small gear. This motor rotates at several thousand RPM and then that's geared down through this set of four gears that you saw earlier in order to decrease the speed of the motor but increase the torque of the servo. These small micro servos have a torque of one kilogram per centimeter which means that if you hung a kilogram of weight, or basically two pounds, at the end of a centimeter, this servo would be able to lift it. Under here you can kind of see the chip. The motor is connected directly to the chip, and then you have the, again, the ground, power, and PWM wire coming in here. This chip is what's called a motor controller, and it takes the PWM signal and converts it into a set of pulses that control the speed and angle of the motor. This little chip, I'm not sure if we'll be able to pull it out here, doesn't look like it, but it is connected. Let's see if we can get this out. See right here, this rod goes down into what's called basically a potentiometer, which is a resistor uh, angle sensor, basically. And what that does is as these gears turn, it spins this potentiometer to show what angle the servo is at right at the point between 180 as we said earlier and when that little sensor that potentiometer measures that angle it tells this chip and this chip turns off the motor so that the motor doesn't keep on spinning so basically if you send a PWM signal that is interpreted as 65 degrees this chip will turn on the motor until everything rotates until the horn up here on the servo, spinning around, reaches 65 degrees, at which point the sensor will read, the sensor over here will read 65 degrees, tell this chip, and this chip will turn off the motor. So that's basically how a servo works. It is a small little brain with a tiny sensor that measures the angle it's at, and a motor. The motor and the gear, gears give the power to the servo to make it a very strong actuation device. The chip allows it to take a PWM signal that 
is converted to an angle, and that sensor up there reads the location of the servo horn, or the servo angle, until it reaches the angle that's wanted, and then it turns off the motor. And that's all a servo is. A servo is just a standard little DC motor with a couple of extra brains and sensors already inside of it.